Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm in East Baltimore, right at the corner of Preston and Wolf Street. And we're going to talk about the building behind me, uh, commonly known as the Diamond Press Building. I um, have to say a quick thanks to Jenny Hope. She's the director of an organization called HEBCAC, the Historic East Baltimore Community Action Coalition. And they have their headquarters here and she's the one who suggested it. So thanks Jenny. Alright, before we jump into that though, let me say a quick word if you're watching real time we're heading towards our october 13th 2022 historic preservation celebration baltimore heritages and we're going to be at the newly reopened peel museum um, we're going to have all sorts of food and drinks we're going to give out awards i hope you can join us and if you do you can help us give out micro grants of five hundred dollars and a thousand dollars to people working on the front lines in our historic neighborhoods um, in the hopes that everybody who wants to attend um, can attend the the ticket price is an optional $25 donation, and if you drive, we've got complimentary parking. So we'll put information on how to register, and I hope to see you there. All right, let's start our story not with the uh, uh, print building here behind me, but in its era as a cigar manufacturing plant, the Wertheimer Brothers Cigar Manufacturing Facility. And if we're going to talk about cigars, we have to start with a word about tobacco in Baltimore. In 1706, the Maryland General Assembly authorized the creation of the Port of Baltimore, and a few years later authorized the creation of the town of Baltimore. It took us a little while to get going. We didn't get our town until 1729 officially, but the express idea was for people to move here, grow tobacco, and then be able to put it on ships and sell, uh, sell it all over the world. That sounded good on paper, but there were two problems. One was the soil around Baltimore is terrible for growing tobacco. And two is the existing tobacco plantations in Southern Maryland and on the Eastern shore already had ample access to ports and ships going all over the world. So we never took off as a tobacco town. As a somewhat aside, we started to take off in 1750, so some years later, really not from tobacco, but from flour. An Irish doctor named John Stevenson did a little experiment. On a ship going back to Ireland, he put on uh, big barrels of flour that was milled near here, and the Irish loved it. It was high quality flour, and it was resistant to mold. They couldn't get enough of it, and pretty soon flour mills started popping up uh, around the, along the Jones Falls here, and we became a flour town. But we're talking about tobacco, not flour. Um, uh, when Wertheimer uh, moved to Baltimore, um, at age 18, I think in 1898, two years later or so, he started his uh, cigar business and he was definitely hand rolling cigars. He joined a long uh, tradition of hand rolling cigars. The Mayans, who we think invented cigars, of course, were hand rolling. And in fact, uh, the word cigar can be derived from the Mayan word cigar, which means to smoke tobacco leaves. When uh, the Spanish arrived in the Americas, they took up the habit of rolling cigars and smoking them. And of course, the, the, uh, the word cigarro uh, goes into English as cigar. And early Marylanders also hand rolled and smoked cigars, although we also chopped it up and put it into clay tobacco pipes. We ground it up and snorted it up our nose as snuff, and we uh, turned it into little plugs that we chewed as chewing tobaccos. But we did smoke cigars as well uh, early on. Um, when uh, Wertheimer moves to Baltimore, he starts hand rolling cigars and joins a very crowded field, at least nationally. Um, a 1905 report states that there were 80,000 cigar manufacturers in the United States. The vast majority of those were mom and pop shops, probably rolling cigars by hand um, in their living rooms. Um, Wertheimer becomes one of Baltimore's first uh, cigar manufacturers, at least manufacturers bigger than the mom and pop stage, and he did quite well. He, uh, it, he started out not here, uh, but he grew within 10 years of starting his business, so that by 1913 he took over a former bakery that had built this building in 1902 and turned it into a cigar plant. The, uh, the office, uh, the building had a, a set of buildings actually, had an office and a shipping area on the second 
second floor. It had uh, a place for drying tobacco um, and a lunchroom for uh, the workers. And then the main part of the building was for storing tobacco and then hand rolling those cigars. So how did hand rollers make those cigars? Well, workers sat at big wooden tables and in the tables there were indentations shaped like cigars. And in that they would put a uh, tobacco leaf and then fill it full of chopped up or ground up tobacco. And then that hand mold it using that little cigar shaped indentation into a cigar shape. Then they'd take a blemish free uh, tobacco leaf and use it as the outer wrapper. And how did they seal it? Well, one report says that it was sealed, quote, with a touch of the tongue. And I'm sure the public health officials, maybe even back then, weren't really thrilled. But if you were smoking a cigar back then, that's how it was made. Um, the war timers uh, lasted here until about the 1930s, and then it, the building went into its new use, not as a print shop, uh, but as milk. A, uh, a dairy called the Crest uh, Family Dairy, excuse me, Crest Farm Dairy, um, whose cows were up in Parkville, bought this building and used it as part of their distribution network. Um, and that lasted for a good long while. Um, but by 1965, it had become uh, Diamond Press. Diamond Press moved in. Diamond Press, just a word about them, they were started in 1934 by a gentleman named Meyer Rayhart. Rayhart got his start in high school at a school called the Otmar. Mergenthaler School of Printing. We know that school today as the Mergenthaler Vocational Technical High School or as everybody calls it, Mervo. That's how it started as a printing school. Um, and uh, uh, Ray Hart did pretty well in school apparently because he did very well uh, owning a print shop. And there was a lot of printing going on here. A lot of it was advertisements. Remember those circulars that would come in the mail? They were coming out of here. As well as uh, signs for windows and businesses that he mailed up and down the East Coast. The final chapter comes in 1998. The, uh, the uh, dairy had merged at that point with another dairy called the Kuntz Creamery, and I'm sure some of you will remember that. And Kuntz Creamery still owned the building until it eventually sold it to a uh, sort of development firm, I believe. And that development firm eventually in 1998 deeded the building to HEBCAC, the Historic East Baltimore Community Action Coalition, um, which has been using it ever since for their programs. So I'm gonna uh, leave you with this note in a building that once uh, uh, housed tobacco rollers and then printing rollers, we now have programs like Dee's Place that's been helping people with addiction for years and years, and then a youth program called Youth Opportunity Baltimore, where our newest generation of Baltimoreans are getting off to a good start. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.